Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is show 659. Today I'm going to bring you excerpts from a presentation by Dr. John Molinari, PhD, Professor Emeritus of the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry on vaccines, their science, perceptions, and myths. And so for those of you that eventually watch the show video on thereasonswesmile.com, you'll see his face up at the top of each one of these little picture panels because this was a he said, you know, we're welcome to take photos of each slide if we wanted to, and that's what I did. So I almost didn't bring you this topic because I was thinking it would be too dry, and it might be. But yesterday I was at a yard sale, actually a moving sale, and I ran into a gentleman that I knew. I'd only met him once or twice, and he started asking me about the viruses and uh, shouldn't we have a vaccine by now, and we have a lot of smart people out there. And, and so honestly what I did was I had taken these photos on my cell phone, and I, I grabbed the couple that I had um, that I thought would help him and I put them up and I'm going to explain those to you now. So that's the genesis of this topic today. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com and we're streaming live on Facebook. Okay. So before we get also before we get started, I want to remind you you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from the Santa's florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. And if you want to pre-program that phone number, it's 614-459-9769. Again, 614-459-9769. Okay. So like I said, we're going to talk about uh, viruses. Actually, it's more uh, vaccines, their science, perception, and myths. It's it's the vaccines. Of course, it's a vaccine against the virus, so <laughs> it's all kind of tied together. So I, I do want to remind people that um, vaccines, have there are several things they have to do. Oh, before I do that, let me just say this. Viruses cannot live outside a host. They have to have a body. That doesn't have to be human, but it has to have a body to live in. <clears throat> they don't have their own uh, machinery. They need to uh, uh, attach to the cell, an inside cell wall of a host, and then they use the uh, host's machinery, all of the, uh, everything that we use to generate energy for us and to live and breathe. That's what they need too, but they don't have their own mechanism. They use ours. Okay, so one of the disturbing things that Dr. Molinari um, pointed out before this, at the beginning of the seminar, was that uh, there's a disturbing trend, and that is that the number of uh, kids that are getting vaccinated uh, dropped in, as you can imagine, March, April, May, and June, because people were afraid to go to the doctor. So it's important that those parents, now that things have, have calmed down, get those kids vaccinated. Otherwise, we're going to have a spike in a lot of things, a lot of different diseases. And um, let me just mention that in the 20th century, uh, there were a lot of people who died of um, diseases that we now have uh, the ability to control through vaccines. So smallpox there were 29,000, diphtheria, 21,000, pertussis, over 200,000, tetanus, 580, uh, polio, 16,316, measles, 530,217 people died of measles <clears throat> in the 20th century annually. These are all annual numbers. Mumps, 162,344, rubella, 47,745. Now, 
Uh, but if I want to compare, <coughs> in 2017, for example, uh, there were zero smallpox deaths, zero diphtheria. There were 15,808 of pertussis. And again, remember, it was 200,000 before. Um, there were zero polio deaths in 2017. Only 122 measles deaths compared to the 530,000. And that's a very, very important uh, thing to note because uh, we, you know, these vaccines are awesome. They protect lives. They save lives. And yet you have a group of people out there who say we shouldn't get vaccinated. They're called the anti-vaccinators, which is um, I have a hard time understanding. I don't try to jam my thoughts down somebody's throat, my feelings and thoughts. Uh, I treat patients who are anti-vaccinators. Sometimes I know it in advance. Sometimes I don't. And, um, uh, but even if I, you know, if I know, I'm not going to try to convince their, their, uh, thinking right then. So I don't want to be overbearing, but I do want to use the show to try to convince people to change their way of thinking because <laughs> you can't, you can't reach into your uh, radio and beat me up. Okay. So <laughs> you never know, right? So here, let's talk about vaccines and why it's so difficult. What are the requirements of a vaccine? And most of this is going to be part of Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, so you might want to write it down or just remember it. So the properties of an ideal vaccine are, one, it has to be safe, no side effects, and non-allergenic. That you would think would be obvious. And yet there are probably compounds out there that would kill a virus, but what good is it if it kills the host, if it kills us? So we know that we can put a package of instruments that have virus on them in an autoclave, and 20, 30 minutes later, it comes out, Everything's dead. There are no viruses there. But we can't put a human inside the autoclave because it would kill us too. Okay? Uh, also, <coughs> the, um, uh, okay, it also immunogenic, meaning it stimulates protective host response. So it has to actually stimulate the host, that would be us, to um, protect ourselves. It needs to provide lifelong immunity. Okay? So getting a vaccine that only lasts a day, what good is that? Getting a vaccine that only lasts a year, better than nothing, but you'd have to have one every year. So the ideal one, the ideal one would be just once. Just get it once and you're immune forever. It would also be nice if it would require only one dose. So for example, hepatitis B vaccinations require three. You, you get one, you get one uh, three months later, and then you get another one six months later. I know because I've had it. But uh, people uh, would, there'd be a lot of people that would fall by the wayside if they had to get three different injections. They'd get the first one and then they'd either forget or change their mind and uh, they wouldn't be protected, but they'd be acting like they were protected. So an ideal, uh, ideal vaccine requires only one administration. Okay, another um, feature would be that it does not increase susceptibility to other diseases. So again, what good is protecting us against uh, SARS uh, COVID? Uh, wait a minute. SARS-CoV-2, anyway, uh, creates COVID-19 um, if it makes us more susceptible to, I don't know, getting, the meas getting measles or something, right? <laughs> we don't want that either. Okay, it has to be able to be administered to not only a, a person who, whose immune system is intact, immune competent, but also to an immune compromised patient. You want to make sure you can vaccinate those folks too. And it needs to be inexpensive. That's probably one of the wins we worry about the most about now. It has to be inexpensive. And by the way, there, no vaccine is 100% foolproof. So even if you get one that does all of this, they still aren't 100% foolproof. When you're dealing with millions and billions of people, there's going to be somebody or several people out there who don't respond, or maybe they get a response, but it doesn't last as long. But uh, this would be ideal. So, okay, now... The, other, the, the topic of my conversation with my, uh, my neighbor at the yard sale, I'm sorry, moving sale yesterday, one of the things I showed him was the panel that talked about the time to develop a vaccine. The duration between discovery of a mi microbial etiology of selected infectious diseases and the development of the actual vaccine. So for, in the case of typhoid, which uh, first hit in 1864, it wasn't until 1989, 105 years later, when we finally came up with a vaccine. In the case of pertussis, which started in 1906, it took 89 years to 1995 before we had a, uh, a vaccine. In the case of polio, which started in 1908, 
It took 47 years till 1955 before we had a polio vaccine. And then in the case of measles, remember measles used to kill 200,000 people a year, uh, every year before the vaccine. In the case of measles, it took from 1953 until 1995, 42 years to develop that vaccine. Uh, as far as uh, HPV, which is human papillomavirus, which uh, we first discovered in 1974, it took 33 years till 2007 for us to develop a vaccine for that. Rotavirus, 25 years from 1973 to 98. Hepatitis B, the one I just mentioned, uh, first occurred in 1965. It took 16 years until 1981. And by the way, I went to dental school from 1978 to 81, and, and we had to get that vaccine as soon as it was available. Now, HIV, which was first, um, first appeared in 1983. We still don't have a vaccine for it. AIDS, AIDS. Uh, for hepatitis C, which uh, first came around in 1989, we still don't have a vaccine for that. And SARS-CoV-2, that's what I was trying to say earlier, the one that causes uh, uh, COVID-19, started in 2020, and we don't have a vaccine, and who knows how long it's going to be. This is sobering information, isn't it? Because I think everybody's thinking we're going to have a vaccine in a couple months. It'll take us uh, nine months to make enough of it to inoculate everybody, and then we'll get everybody inoculated, and life will be wonderful. Well, I think life is still going to be wonderful because we're going to make sure it is. We're going to take precautions, but I don't see us having a vaccine in the immediate future. Now, Dr. Fauci feels very confident that we are going to have a vaccine probably quicker than we've ever had, but there are several steps that have to happen whenever you bring a vaccine uh, uh, to being where all these tests. And so like uh, you start by testing once they think they have something that works. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> right now there are five uh, candidates for a vaccine for COVID-19. It's probably too technical to bother you with, uh, but there are categories of vaccines. There are vaccines that use the inactivated microbial itself. Okay. Uh, then there's one called, they use the attenuated microbial. Uh, for example, these are the ones that uh, would be for the flu, for polio, for uh, measles and smallpox and chickenpox and shingles. And then they also, there's another one where you, um, there's just a product and then some are components of the virus. You take little pieces of a virus and you can uh, put that in your vaccine or make your vaccine out of it. And when you inject it into a, uh, the body, it's similar enough and so your body forms antigens, antibodies against it. And that way, when the actual complete virus comes into your, uh, your path, your body says, oh, this is that same thing I already got used to fighting off. So I'm going to fight that off too. Uh, but it does make people nervous when they hear that uh, the vaccine, well, they're going to inject me with a version of the vaccine. I'm going to get the, the disease. Let me stop you here. You can't get the disease from a vaccine. You can have a, a site reaction where you get a rash around where the needle went. You can maybe get um, feel a little bit um, under the weather a little bit, but that's not you're not getting the disease. Okay, it's just physically impossible, and that's very important that people remember that. Okay, so as I mentioned, we were going to do Dr. Kavitko's question uh, about ten minutes in, and uh, I think we're going to go ahead and do that. So before we do the contest, though. We'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, and you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Flores for this. Um, we are Today we're talking about vaccines. Which of the following describes some of the attributes of an ideal vaccine? Is it A, it should be safe, have no side effects, and be non-allergenic? B, it should provide lifelong immunity? C, does not increase susceptibility to other diseases? D, it should be inexpensive? Or E, 
all of the above. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from the Santos florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Well, we reopened back on May 1st, and I'm happy to say that things are going very well. Our patients are receiving the same great care we've always provided, and we are placing a huge emphasis on infection control. In addition to face shields, like the one I've worn since 1985, and of course exam gloves, my entire team is wearing surgical gowns and caps, and we are limiting the number of patients we have in the office at a time. I'm also happy to report that there's not been a single incident of COVID-19 associated with our office. Call us at 614-262-9588. Dr. Kavico, let's go! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko & Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko is here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have a caller on the line. And uh, so, what's your name, please? Marsha. Marsha. Hey, Marsha, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Do you have the answer? I do. E, all of the above. Seems obvious, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and yet it's really hard to accomplish. Yeah. So, hey, Marsha, what do you do for a living? I'm a nurse. I thought you might be. thought you might be. Cool. So this is definitely interesting, and we want people to hear all this, right? We're not going to have a vaccine in, in two days or two months. Or, right. Yeah. So we all need to wear masks completely covering our mouth and nose, right? That's right. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you That's see people right. with their nose uncovered? Yeah, I hate it. That's the primary pass passageway, by the way, for people to get the you know get something in is through their nose, not their mouth. Definitely. Anyway, um, uh, Marcia, stay on the phone uh, so we can get the information where to send you those flowers, all right? Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 659. I'm bringing you kind of excerpts of a, um, it was a webinar that I, I took part in. It was presented by Dr. John A. Molinari, PhD, Professor, professor Emeritus of the University, <laughs> University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry on vaccines, their science, perceptions, and myths. And uh, Dr. Molinari um, was very gracious, and he said, feel free to take pictures of the screen. Um, and if you look at them, you'll see his face at the very top, because he was live, and so you can see what he looks like. Of course, they're static shots, so you're not going to hear him, so I'm going to have to be the mouthpiece for getting this information out. Before I move on with the show, though, I want to kind of mention, you know, three weeks ago, maybe more, we had the CEO of two, uh, MedTech, uh, the uh, uh, bio company that... Um, came up with the CASPER units, the C-A-S-P-R, Continuous Air and Surface Pathogen Reduction Units. We have since installed them, installed them in our office, and they continuously run. And according to uh, proven uh, research that they have done, we are now decreasing the amount of pathogens in the air and on surfaces in our office by 93%. I think it's actually even more because when we leave the office, we turn on the we turn the machines over to what's called a way mode, and we set it for eight hours, and uh, it turns up the intensity of these units 
to the point where we would not be able to be in the office, we wouldn't be able to breathe because it would be putting so many uh, hydrogen peroxide ions into the atmosphere of the, of the office that it wouldn't be safe for us to be there. But it only runs for eight hours, and uh, by the time we come in, uh, everything is back to, to safe levels. So, um, you know, a lot of dental offices are doing some things to besides PPE, and that's one of the major ones that we're doing. We also ordered, and due to arrive on Monday, these uh, things that will mount to our chair, and we hook our suction hose to it, and we place it in front of the patient's mouth, and on it will be like a funnel or like a high-speed suction uh, thing. And what it'll do is it'll capture aerosol from the patient's mouth as we work. It'll go into the suction unit and not escape into the air. So we're doing like three, threefold. We're, we're first of all, we're treating our air. We're minimizing the amount of aerosol that can get into the air. And we're all wearing PPE, so it won't matter if it, we come in contact with anything. And in fact, I was uh, taking another webinar, and I'm trying to remember if this was Dr. Molinari or a different uh, gentleman. I think it was a different gentleman, Dr. Gurs, that's right. Dr. Gurs from the University of Birmingham, uh, I'm sorry, University of Alabama, Birmingham. And he said that if you're wearing your PPE, if we have our masks, our gloves, we wear something covering our hair. Uh, I have a face shield in addition, and um, the gowns. Uh, that even though he came into contact with uh, somebody that was COVID-19 positive, he didn't have to isolate, didn't have to do anything. Uh, nobody in the uh, facility who was wearing their PPE had to do a thing differently. And they even went on to test a bunch of people who weren't so sure. So anyway, okay, back to vaccines. And again, I'm seeing that there's not a lot of uh, time left and I'm gonna, there's so much information I may not get to. Might have to consider a second uh, episode. A second version of this. Okay, so uh, when a new vaccine is developed and approved and manufactured, you hear about things like phase one, phase two, phase three. So in a phase one, there are 20 to 100 healthy volunteers that uh, are, uh, are, I guess, used as, a, as test subjects. Okay, they all volunteer. And um, what they're looking for is, is it, is it safe? Does it seem to work? Um, are there serious side effects? And, um, and, are, and if there are side effects, what is the size of them and what are they? Now, phase two, they do several hundred volunteers. And what they're looking for is what is the most common short-term side effect? And how are the volunteers' immune systems responding to the vaccine or whatever they're going to use? In phase three, they do hundreds of thousands of volunteers. And then what they're trying to find out is how do people who get the vaccine and people who do not get the vaccine compare? Is the vaccine safe? Is the vaccine effective? And um, what are the most common side effects? So those are the three different categories. And so this is important if you think about it, because when I first heard that they were looking for 30,000 volunteers, or in this case, I guess they want to do, um, uh, well, 30,000 would be phase three. I'm like, well, what are they going to do? Inject people with the virus and see what happens? You know, <laughs> give them the virus, then give them, well, no, I'm sorry. They, so what they do is they, they say they take 30,000 people, and what they'll do is they take 15,000 of them, and they'll give them this vaccine, and 15,000 don't get it. And I believe they actually inject them with some kind of a, a, an agent that nobody knows if that's the vaccine or if it's just like, you know, water, okay? Because there are some psychosomatic things that can happen. And so then what they do is they just monitor those people. Did they get it? How many got it? What were the symptoms? What were the side effects? And by the way, on the control group, the people that really just got water, uh, what, what do we see on that side as well? So um, that's really good to know, right? That we're not uh, like giving somebody the virus just so we can give them the vaccine. I'm sorry, give them the vaccine and then give them the virus and see what happens. <laughs> I wouldn't volunteer for that. Okay, so uh, looks like it's time for me to go to another break. Stay with me though, because I have a lot more information and uh, I think you'll want to hear. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am Not just a little bit Cause you're too much for me. 
This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Put in my glasses. <laughs> back we're talking about vaccines we're talking about their science perception and myths and now it's time to talk about some misconceptions um, is there a relationship between vaccines and autism spectrum disorder are we weakening children's immune system by giving too many vaccines are children getting more vaccines than uh, necessary in today's world is the mercury in the vaccine preservative thymosol causing autism and other disorders well the answer to all of those is no but it's really hard to get people to understand that. Part of it is because you have um, you have everyday people who go online and maybe somebody writes something, uh, maybe they, something they saw or wrote, or, and they want and they want everybody else to know. So they think they're doing a positive thing, and then somebody else finds it and they uh, repeat it as fact. And uh, the best example I can think of would be Jenny McCarthy, who was convinced that her son had autism and that he got it because of the vaccines that he was given. And um, that was actually completely disproven. And I'm looking for the uh, panel that Dr. Molinari provided. But it was not only was it disproven, but it turns out that it was perfectly put out as false information. And that has since been retracted. But of course, the damage was done, right? The damage was done. Now you have all these anti-vaxxers and there are certain states and Ohio is one of them that allows people to opt out of getting their children vaccinated uh, for religious and just other reasons. And so... If you haven't heard of it, there's this thing called herd immunity. There are going to be certain people out there that you just can't vaccinate. Uh, somebody who is ill. Remember, the, one of the things that we wanted the vaccine to be able to do is to vac uh, vaccinate the immune compromised. Well, there are just certain people that, uh, just like people that have a, a terrible reaction to nuts or a terrible reaction to gluten or something, uh, there's so many people out there that just, you, they can't get a vaccination. Uh, honestly, uh, when we did H1N1, the way that was made was using uh, eggs. They injected it into an egg, and uh, the response of the egg created the vaccine. So, But people that were allergic to eggs couldn't take that vaccine. So there you go. Those people needed the rest of us to be vaccinated so that we could protect them, so that we're not all walking around uh, able to give them the disease. Okay? So... Uh, misperceptions would be like myth one, I am healthy, I don't need the flu vaccine. Well, that's not true. Myth two, the last time I got the influenza vaccine, I came down with the flu. We already said that's not even possible. Myth three, I had a tetanus shot as a child, I don't need another one. Well, yes, you do. You need a booster because remember, they don't all last a lifetime. Myth four, I already had shingles, I don't need a vaccine. Boy, that's really false because, um, by the way, that comes from if you had uh, measles as a child, it lives in your body. And it can come out anytime, uh, usually with stress. But as you get older, it's more likely you're going to get it. And then it says some vaccines, myth five, some vaccines are not safe. Absolutely rubbish. They would never release a vaccine that wasn't safe because there's too much at risk. The entire vaccination system, we'd never get anybody to take another one, right? Ever. Okay, so it looks like I'm well out of time. And I apologize to my producer for running late. But, uh, hey, it's important stuff, right? <laughs> okay. All right. That's all the time we have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. 
Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speak.